Detroit has not only attracted as residents celebrated sculptors and artists, internationally famous architects, writers and musicians, it has become a showplace for their works. Detroit has attracted the arts at large. In the world's most beautiful theater, the brand new Fisher, many of the season's biggest hits fill this auditorium to capacity prior to opening in New York. The beautiful, acoustically perfect Ford Auditorium is the home of the world-famous Detroit Symphony Orchestra. And Detroit is host to and supports the Metropolitan Opera, a cultural high point which some said Detroiters would never attend. Big jobs. In 1960, Detroit got 1,400,000 people to come and look at its cars by hosting the most successful national automobile show in history. Can Detroit, USA do all that needs to be done by 1968 in order to ready itself fully for the Olympic Games? Already, the big job is in the hands of the people. 322 ranking members of the Detroit community are hard at work as a committee and underway to get the big job done. Aroused Detroiters everywhere are making their voices heard, sending in petitions by the thousands upon thousands, pledging their support. As a group and as individuals, Detroit citizens with their flair for organization are rolling up their sleeves. Picking up the job of telling the Detroit story are men like Mr. John F. Gordon, president of General Motors Corporation, Mr. Henry Ford II, chairman of the board, Ford Motor Company, Mr. Lynn Townsend, president Chrysler Corporation, and Mr. Richard Cross, chairman of the board, American Motors Corporation. Great strength has been added to Detroit's bid by the able and responsible leadership demonstrated by our governor, who by rallying bipartisan support affirmed the spirit of community cohesion that exists between Detroit and Michigan. Now I'd like to ask Governor Romney to conclude our presentation. You know, a champion must not only have the ability to win, but the will to win. And certainly the city that is host to the Olympics must have the same two things. Detroit has demonstrated beyond doubt that it has the resources and facilities. We're in shape to move, but let me emphasize that we have much more to offer than physical facilities. Detroit's the city of champions. The whole world knows that Detroit is the American city whose products have revolutionized our way of living. And only in Michigan will you find the men and women whose talent made us the arsenal of democracy in wartime and the economic pace setter in peacetime. We not only have a firm program to finance the finest Olympics anywhere and the talent to organize them, but we also have the united will to do so. Our will to win has made us champions. We've proved by actions and not words that Michigan and Detroit are responsible and resourceful and are entitled to the designation we received last fall. We've rallied as never before in recent history. We have the tools, we have the spirit, we have the people to do the job in keeping with the classic tradition of the Olympiad. Your committee is meeting here today because it has been claimed that Michigan and Detroit are financially unable to carry on a successful Olympiad that we can't make good on our promises, that we are unworthy of your faith and trust in originally designating Detroit. The issue of reconsideration faces you with a decision just as vital to us as the question of whether or not Detroit shall be the United States site for the Olympiad. It also has a moral and ethical aspect. You are asked to reconsider your decision on the grounds that we are not financially or otherwise able to put on the Olympic Games, that our plans are only paper plans, that we either don't intend or are not able to do what we have said we will do. In other words, it's not now a simple question of whether Detroit should be selected as a site. It's also a question of whether Detroit is capable of being a site. The meeting here today is not because some other site has come forward to claim that it could do a better job than Detroit and Michigan in putting on the Olympics, but rather because it was claimed that Detroit and Michigan were not worthy to be considered. 
I'm sure you'll agree that this is an unsportsmanlike attack. I believe you can see that if for some reason your Olympic Committee now withdraws your support, it would give Detroit and Michigan and the people and officials who have rallied to retain what was awarded them last fall an undeserved black eye. It would substitute poor sportsmanship for the fairness and honor that is the essence of the Olympics. It would confirm the attacks that have been made. It would injure us irreparably. Gentlemen, to the people of Detroit, of Michigan, of the Midwest, and of the people of the nation and the world who know and respect the spirit of the Olympiad, you owe your continued support of Detroit as the United States 1968 designee. I solemnly assure you that we will not fail you in any way and that we will surprise you with our outstanding handling of the games. On the basis of our integrity and welfare as a state, I beseech you to stand by your earlier decision and reject its reconsideration. Thank you very much. You have just seen highlights of the Detroit Olympic presentation made before the United States Olympic Committee in New York. This presentation played a major part in winning for Detroit the right to be the host city for the United States when it goes before the International Olympic Committee in October.